48 hours has elapsed in all and this is the vinegar part here so what I'm going to do is just take these out and uh, lay them on newspaper here and I, I was just reading the Chicago Tribune to see how many people killed got killed last night and you know it's not even on the front page you got to go to about uh, page 7 of section H in order to find the murders it's not news take that out now what I have I have to do with this hazardous liquid is to uh, um, I'm going to save it until I can contact the EPA and find out how to dispose of it. Surprisingly, there isn't very much uh, debris on the bottom. But what I'm going to do now this doesn't look like one of my wife's casserole like I showed you in the other one that's all that's in there but uh, I'm going to neutralize not that but I'm going over to the sink and put some water in there and uh, baking soda neutralize this and, uh, and scrub it off a little bit I'll be back in five minutes Okay, these are the samples now that were in vinegar, and it's uh, 10 minutes has passed, and I had to do quite a bit of brushing with this little wire brush, believe it or not. And, you know, if you hear crickets in the background or some other nonsense like that, please don't mention those in the comments. You know, stick to the subject at hand, you know. Uh, I guess that's kids doing that. But uh, look at how nice this cleaned up. However, even with the little brushing here, that didn't come off, so I don't know what that is. And I'm not too worried about it but uh, again this is a wagon wrench it's interesting to note the wear here now that's where the horses jerked it uh, this was holding the double tree in and over the years jerking it and distorting it here because this is probably well even maybe it could even be wrought iron but I don't believe that that is a forge well that this was manufactured apparently in a in a factory with a big press but didn't that clean up nice Possibly a little etching there. This cleaned up real well, but there wasn't much rust on this. This had 150 years worth of rust. All right, let's turn our attention to the uh, electrolysis now, and uh, then I'm going to compare it to this, and I need to get some oil on this because we're going to have flash rust here very quickly, I would think. Again, it's 48 hours here on the electrolysis, and we're still at about two amps and you can still see some action here and I added something yesterday off camera and that is you know I'm gonna unplug it should unplug it in case there's a spark probably not very likely but you never know that's a piece from my autopsy We'll see if that cleans up on that uh, tank, that compressor tank. And there it is. Take it over to the bench. And I'm going to break this wire off. And there's the part that did not get, um, was not in the water. Now this is totally black and someone said that it's the carbon because the steel has been uh, removed and the carbon the, and the rust has been removed and probably a little bit of steel too and that uh, it's the carbon that's remaining and just a very thin layer of that but you can see some black here. I'm going to uh, take this to the sink and scrub it real well and come right back. Looking at this piece of the uh, Sears tank that I did the autopsy on, it didn't remove any of this debris here, which I don't think is rust. 
didn't affect the paint but a little bare spot that I had wire brushed appeared to have clean up pretty well so much for that but I'm not satisfied with this one at all and I scrubbed the heck out of it for five minutes with a stiff wire brush and I'm going to take this out to the wire wheel but this did not clean up nearly as well as this other one and notice the flash rust all, all right away that's only 10 minutes ago and it's, it's starting to rust so I will oil that you can see the wear on this one right here but I'm going to get back to this after our, I wire brush it uh, with the power wheel but I'm not satisfied at all with the the rust removal or the fun the, the rust is gone but the appearance of it is not all that good compared to this and this is the vinegar one let's take a look at the anodes real quick here are the four anodes and this is the one that was farthest away from the power source and I did rotate it one time but there's just not a whole lot on that so I'm going to set that aside this is the one that was the second farthest away quite a bit on that that was second farthest going the other direction and the day that I rotated them most of the rust must have been removed from the wrench because there isn't much deposited on the so-called clean side but this is the the one that the actual battery cable was on and I'll you know what, I'm going to scrape these real quick just so you can see the, the amount of uh, rust and corruption. Although, you know what, that's not going to come off as easily as I thought it would. It's pretty crispy on that side. So that's how much I got off of uh, the bottom half, both sides of uh, number one anode. I won't do the rest, but you can see it's considerable. So much, in fact, that I wonder what happened to all of it in the uh, in the vinegar, because there isn't much material in the vinegar. All right, I'll be back in a few minutes, but I'm going to oil this one and wire brush. The other one will have one final look and summarize this. Vinegar again. I can't help but wonder if one of these might have been made in the blacksmith shop of the old Studebaker wagon plant. You never know. Notice that uh, those are forge wells of some kind. Might have been pounded on some kind of power hammer. But look at the welds. Now I oiled this with gun oil, the same as I would oil one of my fine Weatherby high-powered elephant rifles. I took this to the wire brush, the power wire wheel, and, and brushed this side on the inside as well. And, uh, but if I wanted to use the wire brush, I would have just started with the, the rust on the wire brush. So that was a lot more work, and I still don't like the appearance of this as well as I do the more etched and matte finish of uh, the vinegar one. So you tell me. I also notice now that it's cleaned up that somebody was using this as a hammer. In other words, banging something this way with it. You wonder maybe if they were banging the tire back onto the wooden wheel or, or you know what what they did because they wouldn't have had to pound this down into the the double tree and look at the wear on this one as opposed to the wear on the other one that might have happened over a 50 or a 75 year period you don't know and this one was much longer for leverage. The bean counters by then had decided you're wasting metal. Let's make it shorter. They can use a cheater bar. All right. I'm considering making another video similar to this using evapo rust, which several of you have recommended, including Herb Blair and others, and uh, maybe comparing that to molasses. Uh, 
but not unless I get 20,000 or 30,000 views. It just isn't worth my trouble if people aren't interested. But uh, in your comments, uh, tell me what you think, what your preferred method is. I know that most people prefer the vinegar because it's really so, so simple. Any store and a shoebox, you know, and you got that process. You don't need a battery charger and uh, the hard to find uh, arm and hammer, what do we call it? Uh, washing soda. But that is the final results. I haven't oiled this one and you can see the flash rust even though I did oil it so that actually should be cleaned up again. This is Tubal Cain. Remember I can't answer all of the, the comments. I would prefer it if you would bounce off one another kindly. No swearing. There's way too much dirty talk and swearing. I just have to delete all those. Saying so long for now, and I'll see you in my next 700 videos.